Hello, I'm Rich Eisenberg, Editor-in-Chief of Inorganic Chemistry. As part of our 50th anniversary year, we are having interviews with leaders of the field. Today, we're doing an inorganic chemistry first. We're interviewing a couple, not just one, but two preeminent inorganic chemists. Our interviewees today are Professors Don and Marcetta Darensberg, both distinguished professors from Texas A&M University. Both Don and Marcetta have won ACS awards in inorganic chemistry uh, and have been active in the division of inorganic chemistry, have been leaders for a number of years, and uh, for full disclosure, have been good friends of mine as well. Welcome, Marcetta. Welcome, Don. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you, Rich. It's good to be here. Thanks. Let's, let's start with um, your early years and how did your interests in science develop? Uh, separately, let me start with Marcetta, then we'll go to Don. Well, my parents, of course, were the biggest influence on me, and uh, they were school teachers. And I'm from the hills of Kentucky. Uh, they were fairly well educated for uh, the hills of Kentucky. And um, they encouraged me in everything that I've done. My dad was sort of a gee whiz scientist. He was always looking for special things. Uh, but I'm sure had he been trained, he would have been a, a good scientist. I became a chemist because of my high school chemistry teacher, Mrs. Bolton, who I really admired and wanted to be just like her. So then I went to Union College in Barberville, Kentucky, and on to the University of Illinois for my PhD. Okay, we'll get to Illinois in a second. Don, how about you? Well, <clears throat> I grew up in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and uh, science wasn't a big part of my background. Uh, I went to private school, uh, which really had a very weak science curriculum. And my father was a builder, though, and uh, so I was always encouraged. He was good at math. My sisters, my sister actually majored in math in college, so we were good at math, but science I had very little of. Uh, I then. Uh, so what I decided to do was to go on to uh, college and be an architect or mechanical engineer because that's what I was familiar with. And after uh, arriving in Los Angeles for undergraduate school, I uh, really didn't like the mechanical engineering curriculum and we were required to take freshman chemistry. And I really fell in love with chemistry then. And, uh, eventually went on to do undergraduate research with Harold Goldwhite at Cal State LA. And from there, you know, it's sort of history. Do you think some of the architectural elements that are in chemistry, what really attracted yeah, I think, you? I think building molecules is very much akin to building buildings. Okay. It's that same idea and the same satisfaction one gets from making a molecule, determining its structure, et cetera. Now tell our, tell our, our viewers uh, where you went to graduate school, with whom you worked, and what you were doing uh, in graduate school. I think you met in graduate school as well. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, so I went to Illinois, uh, University of Illinois, Champaign-Urbana, and uh, decided to focus on inorganic chemistry since that's what I had focused on as an undergraduate. Uh, worked on the, in the area of infrared spectroscopy with Ted Brown. I started actually with uh, Stan Piper and he uh, passed away during my first year. Uh, so I switched to Ted Brown and uh, was the first member of his group to really get involved in metal carbonyl chemistry. We did infrared intensities, which was a rather odd thing to be doing as an inorganic chemist, but you had to synthesize organometallic compounds. So that was a, the early stages of organometallic chemistry. I actually never had a course in organometallic chemistry because one wasn't offered. Marcetta? Mm -hmm. Well, also at the University of Illinois, and um, I actually had a bit of a hard time finding a group um, because some professors didn't want women in their group at the time. Uh, 
But that was the most fortunate thing for me. I ended up with Ted Brown. And uh, he was a wonderful mentor and a very cautious, careful scientist. Uh, I worked, uh, I probably was the last student to work on his organolithium uh, projects. And he was working on catalysis using anionic polymerization catalysts for olefin polymerizations. I really enjoyed those years. I thought everything that was going on in inorganic chemistry was there at the University of Illinois. And I think I was right uh, for all the physical methods that Russ Drago was developing, the start of materials chemistry that Galen Stuckey was developing, and so much more that I could talk about from those days. Now, this was sometime in the early, mid-1960s? I graduated in 67. Okay. 68. Yeah. Now, did either of you do postdoctoral work? Uh, actually, not. <laughs> I, uh, my first job after graduate school, after four years of graduate school, was at Texaco Research Center in Beacon, New York, which is upriver from the city. Um, and of course, I went there for a reason, and Marcetta can explain that. Uh, but I worked with a guy who was very well known for doing uh, adsorbed uh, small molecules on catalytic, supported catalytic surfaces, a guy named Bob Eichen. So it was sort of a postdoc, but I was paid better than a postdoc. <laughs> And I had lots of time uh, because of the way industry operated at the time. I had full-time technicians and really wasn't allowed to do much work in the lab myself. So I had lots of time to think about proposal writing, et cetera, and almost immediately decided I wanted an academic job. And Texaco was very nice to me. They allowed me to work for eight months after I had obtained an academic job. Very good. Marcia? And I also did not have a postdoc uh, immediately after graduate school. I took a position at Vassar College, which is a wonderful undergraduate institution, the best students, and um, um, had a research lab, which Don frequented when, as soon as we were married and together for a couple of years at Vassar. Um, we um, did some experiments together and published work from that time. Uh, I did have my version of a postdoc came with my first sabbatical, and that was with Earl Mutertes when he was still at Cornell. And in a lot of ways, that really um, gave a huge boost to my career, and he advised me to go study hydrides, Marcetta. And <laughs> it was sort of like plastics, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yes, I do, I do. Actually, I should point out for, for our viewers that in the mid-60s, postdocs were not necessarily as required as they are today in terms of getting faculty positions. Now, let me, let me turn back to this idea of um, uh, from these early studies, what kinds of threads or themes ran through your research until from then until today? Well, I was interested in charge distribution in molecules and how you might probe that in some way with reactivity. Uh, we worked together on this because Don was the infrared spectroscopist who understood force constants in metal carbonyls. So we could uh, map this nucleophilic attack on metal carbonyls on carbonyls um, in the production of acyl uh, uh, from neutral metal carbonyls and, and, and carbanions. So that charge distribution idea carried on for me in my first uh, work with uh, site-specific ion pairing mm -hmm. and then from there on into hydrides. Yeah. And then, but then you continued into organic, uh, bio-inorganic chemistry today with uh, iron hydrogenase models, and, and uh, there is a link. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I, um, 
I think those fundamental studies that we did with metal carbonyl hydrides and uh, just metal carbonyl anions uh, led to my seeing or my interest in finding some hydrides in biology. And I thought that the best place to look for those would be in the hydrogenases. And I started thinking about that before the structures of the active sites of the hydrogenases had been established. So I first got into coordination chemistry using nickel N2S2 compounds. And uh, all I am today, I owe to two molecules actually. A molecule that was synthesized by Dan Mills in my research group, uh, which is, has a square planar nickel and N2S2 coordination. And I was very, I, I, we were very fortunate in seeing a lot of reactivity at the sulfurs of those. Then from that, I went into the uh, diiron hydrogenases. But we can talk okay. more about that. We'll get there, but let's, let's give Don a chance to catch up. And uh, yeah, so in terms of the, the threads and themes as they were established early and how they evolved to today. Yeah, well, from the, from the very start, I was interested in mechanistic inorganic organometallic chemistry. And I had this specialty in infrared spectroscopy background that was very useful at the time. Um, and in the uh, early 70s, because of the fuel crisis, inorganic chemists or organometallic chemists were very involved in fischer trope type chemistry. And so the reaction I uh, elected to, uh, to investigate was a water gas shift reaction, which converts some of the uh, CO to hydrogen. Uh, and during that process, uh, CO2 is a product of that reaction. And so for, for many years, we, we went through studying the mechanism of uh, CO2 reactions into metal hydrides, some of which Mercetta had uh, synthesized and were well characterized. And that evolved to looking at CO2 insertion into metal carbon bonds, metal oxygen bonds, and at the same time employing in situ uh, infrared techniques to monitor reactions, monitor reactions at whatever conditions, high pressures, low temperatures, et cetera. And uh, from, from there, uh, looking at making small molecules with CO2, and eventually progressing to making polymers, which is the emphasis of our work today. Now, this interview is, is unique in the sense that uh, I have the, the two of you here, and uh, um, while it's still not common, uh, it's certainly more frequently encountered that uh, uh, scientists uh, be become life partners as well. And um, I think that a lot of people would be interested in how you handle that transition, how you handled uh, moving from um, being a couple and, and, and locating yourself uh, in uh, a single position or a single place uh, and handling all 